Hello my friends, artists, collage makers, junk journal, crafters, whoever you are. I'm Miss Darling and this is my studio and today I wanted to share with you a bunch of ideas that hopefully will inspire you if you're looking for other ways to use that same type of talent and create other types of products well then hopefully this video will inspire you as well because I've delved myself into lots of different areas using very similar techniques and styles over the years and so I'm going to share a little of that with you so uh, I wanted to show you some examples of things that I have done I at the present time don't plan to make a video well in some cases I've already made a video but um, I'm not going to do a how-to video unless I get enough requests to do so but I wanted to show you first of all this is a Kleenex box now this was all fabric there's no paper on this at all and I did the sides and I did not do the bottom, <laughs> but I did this all on with fabric, and I just love it, and I have it in my bedroom where the colors completely blend with the decorating scheme in my bedroom. And so I wanted to show you a few more examples. Here's another example of of a tissue box that I did and this is a combination I believe of of paper and fabric and there's the top and this is the front and this I made to go in my family room my family room is very neutral with a little bit of uh, rust as a accent color but otherwise very neutral and I really love how this came out. Now on these first two examples I was silly and completely enclosed it so the only way you can get Kleenex in there is to stuff it down through the top and I finally wised up and for a video that I made I didn't do that and so here this is my front and this particular box I designed and made for my office which has neutral colors but also some yellow and um, so here's the top there's my front and what I did with this one is I made it so that I can open up one end let me see if I can figure out how to show this to you I open up one end and I can insert the Kleenex in through the side and uh, so that's what really what you want to do to make it easier to refill your box when it when it gets empty so here we have collage on tissue box I suppose you could call it decoupage because it's not you know on a, uh, a flat surface it's on a dec uh, decor item now here I have made several storage containers and these are all made out of cracker boxes and you can see how I have decoupaged them into really beautiful storage compartments and I'll show you how big they are and how much they store will depend on the size of the boxes that are used so there's one of those here's another one there is the front and end and 
and the back. Not very frilly on the back of this one, but it was made really just to be shown from the front. And so what do I have in here? Well, I store, I have a collection of lots of actual vintage books. And in olden days, published books were very small. And you can see how small these are. And so um, I needed a way to store these that would keep them handy for use in my junk journals, but would also protect them in the meantime. I have these little sacks that I keep them in, and they're perfect to be housed in this storage unit that, again, I made from cracker boxes. Here's another storage box that I made. This one has a definite Japanese vibe theme to it and here is one side and then this is the other side. This is my favorite side so this one is the front and you can see I decorated the ends and I also did the bottom in vintage book papers. So this one also I use to store some of the bigger vintage books that I have and these are, you know, the other box had more um, smaller books or soft cover books in them and this one has hardcover books and ones that are a little bit larger and again my storage container was made from empty cracker boxes. So I just wanted to show you these to kind of give you an idea and, per and perhaps some inspiration on what you could do to take care of some of your storage needs. My daughter gave me this really large box. It was actually a makeup box and was covered on the front with an image of some lady's lips. I mean, just gigantic lips. And when you open it up, the inside cover was <laughs> a whole bunch of lips. And I guess, I guess it was uh, a way of displaying a bunch of lipsticks that a particular company made. Well, I didn't care for the lips, so what did I do? I collaged over it and turned it into something really unique and individual and nobody has one of these except me. And I put one of my lovely Vogue cover imagery there on the front and uh, yeah, this is also a Vogue cover, and I keep some of my stencils in, in here. And so, you know, when you, as you, if you're in this as a business, or if you're just doing it as a hobby, you're going to need storage containers to uh, keep yourself organized. And so, if I have something that I think is useful but I don't like the look of it, I'm going to decoupage or collage over, over it so that I like it better. And, and it uh, is suitable for being here in my studio. I needed some storage for some of the small journal or pages, things that were taller. And so I made this storage container, and this is, again, out of cracker boxes, just bigger ones. 
and taller ones. And so this is one side and here's uh, an end and then we'll turn it over and look at the opposite side. And so um, trying to let you see kind of all of it. It's quite large and like I say, you know, if find the boxes that are going to uh, be suitable for yours. And so let me kind of show you, looking down on it, we have two boxes here that are identical, and these two boxes are identical. They're all the same height, but just in a different configuration. And then the box in the middle is taller than the rest of them. And so it gives me this very unique sort of concave shape to it. And I liked working with that. It was a nice challenge. And again, it is a very fun thing to do. And obviously, when you make one of these, they're just one of a kind. There's no one else in the world that's ever going to have anything like this. And so that makes it really unique and special, I think. I have also decoupaged on clear glass vases. And here's one example. And you can see on the interior there is imagery. as well as on the exterior. And this is the front, my gal. And then as you turn it around, there is also a focal point on the back so that, you know, if you had a vase that was sitting in a place where it can be viewed from all sides, then of course you want to have it look nice from all sides. In this particular case, I have a front image and a back image. And this is started out as just a clear glass vase. And I think you can even see inside there, there's an image on the bottom as well. And so this was one of the first ones I ever made. And I'm going to go get now some of the more advanced ones that I also made. Okay, here I have a larger glass vase. And again, it is decoupaged. And this, if you as you turn it around, the pearl jewelry pulls your eye around to the back and there is a focal image on the back. So this face can be enjoyed from more than one angle. And we come on around and back to the front again. And as in the other one, you can see that uh, I have also got imagery on the inside. I don't believe yeah, there's nothing on the bottom but a, a black surface. But I found very quickly that I was taking a lot of time putting imagery on the inside as well as the outside. And it really isn't worth doing all of that unless you have a large base with a 
big enough opening that one could even notice that there's imagery in there. Uh, the smaller the vase, the less likely anyone would even know there was something in there other than you. But so here is this decoupage and again something very unique. There's not another one on the planet like it and uh, so I had a lot of fun. They are time consuming to make and therefore if you were to make something for the purpose of selling it um, you know you're talking about a high-end product. I've got one more here to show you. I've done quite a few. So Okay, this one is even bigger than the other one, so we'll do the best we can. So here was my focal image. Try to get that where there's no glare on it. There's the focal point, and again, it's decoupage, so I've worked in a lot of other imagery. Here's like a little cupid and there's more jewelry that you know takes the eye on around to the back and here is a famous uh, image from a famous painting of Sir George slaying the dragon and um, so that is could be the main focal point or in my case I have it just on the back and you come on around and there's more jewelry that that I've used to pull the eye around to the side and on back to the front and on this there is imagery as well just in the form of decorative Japanese painting, Japanese calligraphy I should say, and uh, as I move on around it goes all around the interior of the vase and there is an image there on the bottom. as well and I uh, spent a great deal of time and effort just working out the details of the imagery and each image required a, a background to be put on first and then you know so you have to work up in layers and um, so it can be very complex and involved, especially in the larger vases, because you have to, you want to work in the appropriate scale of, you know, your vase. The, the wider the vase, the usually the taller they are. And so you wind up having to look for very large imagery and that uh, meets your criteria not only in size but color and subject matter and and quality so I hope you can kind of appreciate how difficult that could be and um, why they are so time-consuming I probably spent as much time just in the thinking and design process as I did actually making the vase. Okay, well that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this uh, show and tell and I hope I've inspired you not only in the junk journal area but 
you know, to branch out and try other things as well because there's an immense amount of ways one can go and take something and, you know, really make it uniquely yours and have it be, you know, very functional, not just nice to look at. And so, as I said in the beginning, I will consider doing how-to videos on some of this, for instance, the vases or these storage containers, but only if there is enough, I feel there's enough interest to justify the time and effort it would take to do it. I have unfortunately found thus far that when I branch away from zeroing in specifically on junk journaling that I, of course, um, um, don't get the reception that I do when I stick to junk journals. And so, if you want something like that, and, you know, then you'll, I just ask you to leave a comment and leave a request in the comment section. And if I get enough requests, I'll consider doing some how-tos on these other types of products. So that said, thanks for being with me and for watching, and I appreciate you being here, and hope you'll give the video a like and share it, and leave me a comment, let me know what you're thinking and feeling, I'd appreciate it. So that said, this is Miss Darling calling this a wrap. Bye-bye.